Thank you very much. Well, I will get started right away. We think that we can make organic carp fertilizer. And the, the whole idea has to do with having these large lakes in Manitoba. Manitoba, we have, well, for one, Lake Winnipeg being the 10th largest lake in the world, and it's home to perhaps the largest unexploited fish populations. There's uh, an estimate by one of us uh, that, it, that that could be even 15,000 uh, extra, uh, 15,000 tons extra fish that could be taken out of Lake Winnipeg in a sustainable way. And uh, it's important from the point of view of uh, commercial fisheries right now because they are based on high value fish species, some of which you can see up there, pickerel, sauger, uh, perch, and whitefish. And uh, there are a few bycatches or uh, species that people don't seem to like to, to pay for them. And those are sucker and carp. Sucker is a native species, and carp, that's European carp, is an exotic. And it was introduced over 100 years ago. Uh, now, carp is very abundant. Um, I'm, I'm going to focus on carp, but these rough species uh, can be quite abundant. Uh, so carp is quite ab abundant, it's invasive, and uh, they are bottom feeders. That means that they disturb the sediment when they are uh, living, when they're looking for food. And that causes a resuspension of nutrients. When you have that, then you get eutrophication which means there are lots of nutrients around. The algae grow really fast. You get these algal blooms. And uh, being of low commercial value, carp is sort of a problem because it adds to uh, fish waste from uh, the, the commercial fishery plants that uh, ends up in landfills. So, uh, oh, and, and these are a couple of photos, a satellite photo of the, uh, a recent algal bloom and, and now carp are not the main causes, but we don't know how important they are. They could be an important cause of, of these algal blooms. And uh, not too long ago, people had become quite uh, concerned with the state of the lakes in Manitoba. In particular, uh, there have been reports of, about Lake Winnipeg being perhaps at the tipping point, and there was even a uh, uh, David Suzuki's the Nature of Things special program on Lake Winnipeg, Save My Lake. So there is this concern. On one side, we have these, uh, this, these fish, the rough fish, that uh, may contribute importantly to the algal blooms. We also have um, a collapsing fishery uh, that will trigger unemployment in local communities. And so we have algal blooms, that may also cause mortality of other species, and so other fish species. And so we have a, what looks like a big ecological problem and uh, looming economic problems, and they sort of feed each other. So could it be just a nightmare, or may, maybe it could be uh, a source of environmentally friendly products and uh, some economic relief for several parties? And so we think that one of the products that you can make out of rough species is organic fertilizer, and uh, that would increase the value of these species, and, uh, and then fisheries would not shut down. And so if we don't completely suppress, we at least mitigate these ecological and economic problems. Now, when I say we, it's because uh, I am here representing uh, four other colleagues, uh, one of whom uh, has retired now, and I didn't get a photo of him. But uh, so that's Dr. Forbes on your left, uh, uh, Dr. Wiegand, and uh, Dr. Frank, uh, who are specialists in different areas. So I'm here talking about fertilizer because I work, work with plants. And so my colleague said, well, we'll do the grinding, we'll do the extraction, and you do the testing of these, uh, the, uh, these products. And we called ourselves Group Zero or Project Zero for uh, Zero Emissions Renewable Organics. So how do you make 
fish fertilizer. It looks pretty easy. You catch the fish, you blend it, you digest it in acid, uh, and then you filter and titrate, and you got your fertilizer. At least that's, to me, that's how it is, because all I get is a bottle, and uh, Mary says, oh, go test it on your tomato plants. And so the main test is, first of all, can we make real fertilizer? Does it improve the growth of plants? And after we do that, we will move on to uh, getting a, an analysis to see if there's adequate uh, nutrient concentration, if uh, it meets the, the standards of, for organic certification, and then uh, we could move on to uh, mass production of fertilizer. So we have already results from a pilot study. The main question, does it improve growth? We had different uh, dilutions of our, the bottle I got, the fertilizer. Uh, we didn't know for sure how concentrated it was. And uh, so it was my task to see where do we get uh, a positive effect and if we get any negative effects of adding this um, extraction to our plants. And so you can see on this graph that the, the first dilution at 1 over 10, right, is, uh, is where we get an effect, a, a positive effect of, uh, of adding uh, fertilizer to the plants. This is from soccer. And, uh, and then the others were just extremely uh, low in any effect. They, they were exactly the same as the control. So we're pretty happy with that first part. That's our first study. And we are ready to move on to a second phase. And we, in fact, the little uh, inset you see on the right top of your screen is uh, a photograph taken a couple of days ago of new tomato plants waiting for their fertilizer treatment. These are cherry tomatoes. And we will also start working with a, a rapid uh, growth granola, uh, canola variety. After that, so we want to make sure that these, these extractions are being consistent and we're getting uh, a good product. Then we'll go to the elemental analysis of the fertilizer. We have a business plan on the go somewhere in some part of this university. It's being done. And uh, then, uh, actually, Dr. Forbes is already conducting some initial assessments of uh, stock size. But we need to really have the, the, the fishers taking intensively some, uh, some fish out of the lake so that we get good estimates of the sustainable harvest rate. So in summary, we think we can make fertilizer out of fish. We have the first evidence. And uh, therefore, we could contribute to mitigate an ecological problem, which we think it's a win for the native species and the ecosystem of, of the lakes and also for human health and enjoyment of the lakes. And perhaps we can also contribute uh, to, have an open, uh, to open a market for these species that have currently low value and nobody wants to eat. And so uh, that would be a win also for the communities that depend on fishing for their sustenance. And with that, I...